We are at 9.30, everybody. So if we're all ready, I would like to call a meeting of the Human Services Committee to order. Please call the roll. Chair Sforzy. Here. Member Childress. Here. Member Garcia. Member Desart. Here. Member Velasi. Here. Member LaFlan. Here. Hey, thank you. Do we have any public comments? No public comments. Okay, with regards to my comments, I just wanted to share that uh, Vice Chair Garcia and myself attended the uh, DuPage Transfer, uh, Transformation Partnership Planning Work Group with Mary Keating uh, this past week. And um, Paula and myself will be part of that uh, uh, selection committee for round three of the uh, uh, of uh, the uh, grants that we'll be putting out in 2023. So I just, uh, more information will be coming as, as we do that. We also did get an update of uh, um, all the grants that were handed out in round one and round two last year. And uh, I will be doing a presentation on that um, later this year, probably this summer, as um, some of the results start coming in of, of those, those grants and how Which they affected people. Those? The first round was the immediate, this is the $10 million. Okay. Um, so of the, uh, the, the first round was um, uh, immediate care, immediate help. And um, there was about 1.1 million handed out there. And then round two was the more transformational two year grants and the, uh, you know about three and a half to $4 million was handed out there. So, uh, um, and then this year's round three of these grants that will be uh, that we will uh, hand out this year will be uh, again in the immediate people that need immediate help there. So more information coming, but I just wanted to fill you guys. In. I also have background yeah. memos. That I can, I can do it as part of my update, but okay. I have the list of everybody who used to use the person. Okay, very good. Thank you. Uh, any comments from any of the members at this point? Hey, I need a more. <laughs> yes. Need a, uh, a motion to approve the, the minutes of the January 17th, second. 2023. We have a motion by Member Galassi, second by Member Childress. Is that right? Yes. The plan? The plan. Right. Okay. Uh, questions or comments? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. On to uh, community service requests, I need a motion to approve item uh, FIR 5723. A resolution, acceptance, and appropriation of the Illinois Department of Human Services Emergency Solutions Grand Cares Act Plan Year 23 Intergovernmental Agreement uh, in the amount of $383,397. Moved by Member Childress, second by Member Garcia. Any questions or comments? All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Thank you. I need a motion to approve item FIR 5823, a resolution acceptance and appropriation of the DuPage Housing Authority Family Self-Sufficiency Program Plan Year 23 Agreement in the amount, uh, this goes from January 1st of 23 through December 31st of 23 in the amount of $121,726. So moved. Second. Motion by Member Garcia, second by Member LaPlante. Any questions or comments? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. Need a motion to approve item FIR 5923, a resolution, the acceptance of an extension of time for the ILD CEO Community so Services moved. Block Grant and Plan Year 22 Intergovernmental, intergovernmental Agreement number 231, I'm sorry, 22-231028 uh, through March 31st, 2023. Second. Motion by Member Childress, second by Member Garcia. Any questions or comments? All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Thank you very much. On the budget transfers, I need a motion to approve item uh, budget transfer to the DuPage Care Center to transfer funds for the mm -hmm. rental of machinery and equipment in the amount of $100. Second. Motion by Member Childers, second by Member Galassi. Yes, Member Childers. Do we have a minimum on how much needs to come for this committee? Because a $100 budget transfer it does seem light. I don't know, Mary, do you have an answer to that? It depends on the category that it's moving oh, from category. head to. Okay. So because of the category, it's a, it's a is there a normal budget. minimum? Like budget transfer, it I think it's, I don't know if anybody from finance is here, but it, I believe it's 100% dependent on what category it's moving okay. to. So if it's moving from commodities to contractual, it requires board moving. So 
in those broader categories, if it's moving from, you know, uh, professional services to interpreter services, which are all contractual, <laughs> then I don't think that needs board approval. And I, so we can certainly- I just wanted, because it seemed yeah. like such a small amount, yeah. chairman, that I thought. Well, good that question. I'm sorry, to look. They have an answer at the next meeting. How's that? Yes. On the travel, I need a motion for authorization for overnight travel community services administrator to attend the National Alliance of Information and Referral 2023 training conference in Orlando, Florida from July 29th through August 2nd of 23. Oh, sure. I don't think you voted on the last one. All in favor of the budget transfer for $100. Aye. Opposed? <laughs> thank you. Thank you. My mistake. And then uh, on to the authorization for overnight travel. Um, so moved. Expenses Maybe. to include registration, transportation, lodging, miscellaneous expenses, and per diems, the amount of $2,140. We have a motion by um, member to start, second by member Childress. Any questions or comments? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. And then uh, I need a motion to approve authorization for overnight travel for the community development manager to attend the legislative conferences and committee meetings of the National Association for County, Community and Economic Development and the National Association of Counties in Washington, D.C. from February 9th through February 12th of 23. Expenses to include transportation, lodging, miscellaneous expenses and per diems in the amount of $1,976. So moved. Moved by members. We were cutting this close because it's in two days, right? Yeah, <laughs> I was going to point that out. Um, I, uh, the, the manager and I had a, a little bit of miscommunication about whether she could attend in person this year is last year it was virtual. Um, so she is attending and um, county board rules for travel say that as long as it goes to parent committee, because this doesn't have to go to the full board, but as long as it goes to parent committee before the travel starts. Oh, um, it's So she'll be gone at bat or if we go to the I know, board. Right, right. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, so I don't know, she'll time travel if it gets <laughs> um, I'll point out um, that one of the reasons I, I'm excited for her to go in person um, is that uh, Julie serves as the chair of the NACED Education Committee. Um, so uh, it's great to see her taking leadership role in the organization. And the Education Committee is the one that really solicits information from members about what kind of training um, they all need and, and helps um, sort of establish the agenda for the annual conferences. So. Thank you. And I will say that Mary did reach out to me last week on this and told me of the uh, um, the confusion with the with the getting this set up and, and the fact that she wasn't going to be able to go and that she was able to go. So, uh, any questions, other questions or comments? All in favor say aye. 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 Okay. Um, on for, to informational, um, I need a motion to uh, approve item grant proposal notification GPN. 005-23, a community development block grant fiscal year 23 from the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Urban Development in the amount of 3,600, I'm sorry, 3,673,703. So Second. Any questions or comments? Yeah, is this part of what your, your opening remarks were? Uh, negative. Okay. This is, uh, I don't know, Mary, do you want to share? Sure, the CDBG program, is, is this a planning number, isn't it? versus section plan. Um, all three of these are grants that we received directly from the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development. They're used for a number of items. Uh, the CDBG program is used for things like infrastructure improvements in low and moderate neighbor income neighborhoods, public services um, to benefit low and moderate income individuals, um, and facilities improvements for nonprofit organizations. The Home uh, Investment Partnership Program is used specifically for the uh, uh, acquisition, rehabilitation, or construction of affordable housing. And Emergency Solutions Grant is used um, to provide um, uh, access to emergency shelter operations for emergency shelter, as well as homeless prevention services. All three of these, I should say, are planning numbers. The federal 2023 budget has been, has been passed. We don't have the specific dollar amount, but because our program year starts April 1st, we have to get the, the budget set up so that we can, you know, continue operating. Um, is that just formulaic? Yes. How much we, and is this about the same amount that we've received in past years? Does this number fluctuate much year? The number year? fluctuates based on the top line number that Congress passes. I okay. think there's a slight cut in CDBG this year. Um, 
Uh, I think home maybe was a slight <laughs> increase, Dave. Yeah. Correct me if I'm wrong. And I think he well, so has that's for, We don't have the numbers for 23 yet. Yeah, you're right, right. You're right for 20. Federal <laughs> fiscal year 22. Okay. We, yeah. They've passed the budget, but they have to run the formulas to determine what our actual amount is. Okay. Right. So Congress passes the top line number, and then HUD um, gets that top line number, runs their formula through um, the number of, of communities that receive these funds can fluctuate from year to year. So even if the dollar amount is exactly the same between two fiscal years, it doesn't necessarily mean that our allocation would be the same. Thank you. Uh, so this, this can't, this has been approved already, correct? On the, on the federal level. On the federal level. Yeah. On the federal level. Okay, yeah. that was my concern because given the way Congress is set up right now, I just want to know if we can go back and just rescind it and say, no, we're not doing it. No, the federal, the federal uh, 20, federal fiscal 2023 20, budget has been approved. So okay. these numbers have been approved by Congress. What Thank we you. don't have is the specific amount that we will get. So like I said, at some point later in the year, you'll, you'll see a resolution accepting and appropriating funds. Um, that, depending on the timing, could also be a planning number. And then again, we'll come back with a slight modification. Usually we'll come back with a modification for, you know, a $9,000 change one way or the other somewhere in that, in that range. Any other questions or comments? Okay, thank you, Mary. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, uh, on to item B, I need a motion to approve item grant proposal notification GPN 623, the Home Investment Partnership Program, fiscal year 23 in the amount of 1 million. Nine hundred sixty-two thousand nine hundred ninety-seven dollars. So moved. Second. Any motion to second questions or comments? All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed. Thank you. And then uh, I need a motion to approve grant proposal notification GPN seven twenty-three emergency solutions grant for fiscal year twenty-three. The U.S. So Department of Housing and Urban Development in the amount of two hundred ninety-five thousand nine hundred sixty dollars. We have a motion to second questions or comments. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed. Thank you. Very much, everybody. Um, on to residency waivers. I know we do not have any. Her Janelle, she is online today. Uh, so, how about a DuPage Care Center update? Good morning, everyone. Can you hear me okay? Yes. yes. Okay. I'm going to start with our COVID update. We're still having uh, periodic cases of staff and residents kind of hit or miss. Um, so we still have our COVID unit in place. Uh, there, we have a couple of residents on there at this point in time. We do have three units that are uh, under quarantine right now. Um, so we're just continuing our normal uh, processing of infection control to reduce uh, spread. So seems to be effective. Any COVID questions before I move on? No? Uh, well, a member of the plant has a question. Yes, yes. Um, so you said three units. Can you tell us how many uh, residents and how many staff? On those units, they're just, they've had a potential exposure. They do not have, so if we have a staff member that worked on that unit mm -hmm. and they end up being positive, then we quarantine the unit as a precaution. Okay, um, so how many active cases do you have? Uh, we have, I believe there's two people in the COVID unit <laughs> right now. All things considered. That's pretty good. Right. I mean, it's just ebbs and flows. We're still, yeah. you know, I think we're tying, going through the finishing phases of our holiday sure. <laughs> gatherings. Yeah. So, okay. Thank you. You bet. The other thing I wanted to talk about is our renovation. Um, we did get the bids in and they were as anticipated. We are uh, looking at our fourth four North floor. It's been empty for this reason. So we can start demolition soon. So, um, we're in the stages of planning when that can actually begin. And then the next steps, um, I know Tim Harbaugh has worked with us very closely um, and been a great support for the care center in this project. So we're excited to get it underway. So that's great. my report for today. Question by member Garcia. Yeah, do you have a time frame for when they think they might be doing the work on the fourth floor? Not yet. Idea? The demo could start soon. Um, I don't have the final date for that. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Um, Member Desart. They said in public works that in, in your oh, community, yeah, that's right. That um, just, groundbreaking could happen in weeks, in just in a weeks. few weeks. That's, that's right. Yep. Yep. That's the planning portion. Yep. Coming close. Well, thank you for sharing. Yes. And, thank and you. then I just wanted to uh, remind everybody here and anyone listening online that uh, 
the care center is still accepting donations for their Valentine's Day balloon um, giveaway or for a better lack need, of term. Are you still in need of balloons? Well, always. I mean, that, that's quite a competition for how many each resident gets on their chair or their okay. bed. I do want to make sure everyone understands these are a Mylar balloon and they are recycled. Right. Ah, yeah, so good to know. Thank you very much. Thank uh, you. On to community services update, Mary Keating. I do a couple things this morning. First, I, um, I, I think I'll just take a second um, to explain exactly what a grant proposal notification is. Um, the, you'll see more in these committee, I, this committee than any other because of the number of grants that we manage. So the grant proposal notification process was developed probably about a dozen years ago. And the point of it is to notify the board when we are applying for or about to receive funds before we actually receive them. And if you look at the actual document, it asks a number of questions like, is this a recurring? Is this, is this are we getting it based on formula or competition? Um, how are we using the funds? Will it be going to, to, um, to fund staff? Uh, is the staff cost uh, covered 100%? Does the county, it's really, it's, it's really to determine what obligations there are on the county for accepting the funds. Um, so that's the purpose of them. You'll see them in this committee a whole lot just because of the number that we do. So it's, it's basically a notification to the board of, hey, this grant is coming and here's what we plan to do with it. Sometimes we bring them just because of the timing of, of how we get notification that we're receiving it, often from the state because they can be pretty slow in their processes. You'll see sometimes the grant notification is on the same agenda as the acceptance and appropriation. But what we try to do is the notification comes first and then down the line, you'll accept and appropriate those funds. And, and so with regards to this committee, actually having it on the agenda and voting for it, are we just voting that we received it or? Receive and place on file okay. is typically okay. what the, okay. yeah, that's typically the sort of the language. Oh, I'm sorry, member of you. Thank you. Um, so is it possible that after you do these notifications that you're actually funded less or more than what you're asking for? Yes, and, and with the grant, I'm, I'm trying to think. Um, trying to think of a circumstance where it might be a slightly different number. So as I explained with, with these federal funds, um, the acceptance and appropriation will probably come back with these planning numbers in it, and then we'll do an adjustment down the road. It's usually within, you know, a, a very small percentage variance. It would be very unusual for us to have a, a GPN um, that's way off from what we actually end up doing. Thank you. I've never actually looked to make sure the numbers tie exactly, but um, unless, uh, because most of the time we're not we're not basing it off of a planning number like we are with the HUD funds. We're basing it off of something that we've already received that says this is exactly how much you're getting. Okay. Any questions on this? Thank you, Mary. Okay. Then the other thing was um, just, uh, piggybacks on um, the chair's opening remarks. I thought it would be helpful to share with the board some um, some background information on the the partnership with the DuPage Foundation. Um, the for the for the new members just to you know just, uh, just a little bit of background in fall of 2021 the board voted to enter into a partnership with the DuPage Foundation and we created the DuPage Community Transformation Partnership. Um, in 2022, the uh, the partnership allocated just just around five million dollars in two rounds of grants. The first being the, the immediate intervention. So there's, those are programs that get um, services right out the door right away. They're, some, they're, they're sort of almost crisis intervention level services. The second round was what we refer to as transformational grants. Um, the concept of those, those are two-year grants um, that are designed to increase the capacity or the efficiency of the way services are delivered. Something that, that hopefully can um, uh, help the program maybe be a little bit more self-sustaining, more efficient, um, something that's that really changes the way services are, are delivered. Um, as Chair Shorzy said, in 2023, um, there will be the next round of immediate intervention, which will be around a million dollars. Um, and then in 2024, 
there will be the second round of transformational grants. Um, so I thought it was important. I know there's discussion among some board members about uh, you know an, an additional grant program, um, but I thought it was important that that uh, board members understand uh, what agencies are already getting funds from the county through these two programs. Um, uh, there was something else I wanted to say, and it lost me train of thought. So. Um, I will be, oh, I know what I was gonna say. I'll be sharing this memo with the full board, but I thought it would be helpful to just present it in person to you all this morning. Quick question, yes. how are these determined? Like how many, I'm assuming many people applied to yes. it. So how, how is it narrowed down to this list? So there's a scoring matrix, but a lot of it has to do with um, uh, the, the, and I have to see if I can find the scoring matrix, but um, a lot of it has to do with how well the, the organization presents their case, what, what is the effectiveness of their program, how many people do they, do, they, do they intend to serve, what percentage come from DuPage County. Yes, it's a very competitive process. Um, yeah, go ahead. So, sorry, so um, are these reevaluated on an annual basis would be one question. And a second question is like how, what percentage that applied were um, awarded some level of grant? So if there was a two-step process, um, agencies had to submit a letter of intent. So the letter of intent sort of lays out the basics of what they'll be applying for. The, um, the review committee, which consists of both staff and community volunteers from the DuPage Foundation, as well as myself. And then in 2023, um, members Garcia and Schwarzy will serve on it as well. The review committee looks at the letters of intent and says, um, you know, these uh, narrows it down to the ones that look like they, they have some pretty good potential. Um, and then those, uh, those agencies are invited to submit a full application. The idea being that you don't want to basically waste the time of 40 organizations if you know you only have funding for, you know, 18 of them. Mm -hmm. um, so some of it had to do with the dollar amount they were requesting, um, but most of it had to do with what they were exact, what exactly they were proposing to provide. Um, in terms of evaluation, the one-year grants, um, there's there's strictly a one-year grant, so people will have to reapply. Part of that reapplication process will include what have been what have been your results. Sure. The two-year grants, there's a six-month um, reporting requirement, and so I think they, I believe they got a year of funding. And then at the end of you know the six and twelve month review period, if they, if it's not working, they're not guaranteed to get that additional money. Okay. And then I'm assuming that as the team is evaluating who's getting the grants, it's kind of also they're trying to get a wide range of different services. Yes. Yeah. Right. Right. And and, and um, member Galassi, just again this, and you may know this, but it, it hasn't been said here. This ten million dollars was earmarked for hunger, housing, mental health, and uh, um, addiction. Okay. So mm -hmm. those parameters okay. only Thank for, you. for these grants. Yeah. 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 It was, yeah, it was four subject areas. Okay. And you'll see in the transformational grants, the vast majority of the funding went to uh, mental health and substance use. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because that was really where we saw um, actually the best applications and the largest number of applications. Sure. Okay. And, and, and uh, and I will um, add that uh, as, as a member of the county board and as a member of this committee, even, even last year, I kind of felt like we were sort of out of the loop and maybe you guys felt that way too, that we're here last year. But with, with Paul and myself now being on the selection committee, we, I will, one of us will be bringing it to the board and letting everyone know what's going on. So, so we will we won't have that this this I'm time. I'm glad around, so. I, I think it's important to have board members on the committee. Yeah. Yeah, it's, 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 it's great. Thank you for your service. Yeah, yeah. Thank you for reading all those applications. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I don't think that oh um, <laughs> the, the the annual homeless point in time count was completed the last week of oh, January. Yeah. So I just want to thank all the volunteers who, who were out that night. Um of course it was during that you know that little cold snap we had it, it seems to it's um every year it's always one of the coldest nights and so um i think the number of unsheltered individuals that they located were was slightly down from the, the prior year so that's good news um you have the number it's in the 30s okay. somewhere in the 30s i don't remember what the number was 
Can you give me a little background on that? Yeah, sure. So um, we serve as the lead agency for what's called the homeless continuum of care. Every agency, every community that receives HUD funding for homeless services, um, which is separate from the HUD funding that we were talking about earlier, um, uh, is required to have to, to form an organization called the Continuum of Care. And the Continuum um, is charged with coordinating um, the broad spectrum of um, services to prevent and end homelessness. As part of that, um, as part of the requirements of a continuum, one of the requirements on a Continuum of Care is to, to do what's called an annual point in time count. It has to be done the last week of January. Um, and it's, it's, uh, it has to be done at night and community volunteers go out and try to um, identify and locate unsheltered homeless individuals, try to get some basic information about them and obviously um, help direct them towards services. Um, a lot of times the, the volunteers will have blankets or you know some basic food supplies, some gift cards, those kinds of things so that they can provide some assistance for the night. Um, that number is something that the federal government uses to, um, to sort of gauge how many unsheltered homeless individuals there are across the, the United States in, in a single point of time. We, have, uh, uh, we, we are in sort of constantly um, updating our data in terms of the number of individuals experiencing homelessness um, in DuPage County, but the idea of the point in time is to have a, you know, a single uh, a single point um, where across the nation all continue are doing this same exercise to get a national number. Do you target any particular area? Oh, yeah, area? absolutely. So our continue of volunteers, many of them have been doing this for many years. And so they talk to, in the planning process, um, they talk to uh, police departments, um, uh, paramedics, people out in the community, as well as individuals who are, are have been have experienced homelessness to identify what are some of the hotspots where where do they know um, you know we're fortunate in DuPage County we don't have huge encampments like many communities do but there are definitely um, places that um, unsheltered individuals are known to go uh, pads uh, DuPage pads has an, a very active street outreach um, um, program so they are very familiar with. Um, where many individuals are. I'm pleased to say the numbers are pretty low for DuPage compared to you know, other places. A friend of mine is the community development director for uh, Los Angeles County and their point, of, point in time unsheltered numbers is somewhere between 60 and 70,000 people. Uh, um, right? It's yeah. a whole community. A whole it's, community. it's all throughout Los Angeles. And that's, the, that's Los Angeles County. That's not with, even within oh, the city of Los proper. Angeles. So, um, uh, so our numbers are low, but that doesn't mean that we shouldn't be paying just as much attention to the issue. So, do you have any other questions? Yeah. Okay. Um, I do, just for clarity. So, um, and this is just for anyone who's listening or curious. Um, this means people who are experiencing homelessness but have not found the services that are available they're to take they're advantage of. Currently unsheltered. Exactly. And so, can you speak to um, how that happens? Either, well, um, number one, the pad shelter is full, the interim housing okay. center is full, um, Catholic Charities emergency shelter is full, the emergency shelters are full. So in some cases, it's a matter of individuals um, not having, now the county board did allocate additional funds to PADS this year um, for uh, hospitals, uh, hospital, for hotel stays um, during the winter months. Um, but there's always going to be individuals who, you know, I mean, it's, it's a sad fact that it's, you know, that pass, as soon as, as soon as uh, capacity is created, that capacity is required. So there's also other individuals who, um, you know, individuals with with particular criminal backgrounds, um, uh, or who have not had, who have been asked to exit emergency shelter in the past, um, they don't have access to that. To that. So um, that's one of the ways it happens. So, uh, uh, sometimes people don't know about services, um, or they're just hesitant to, for whatever reason, they don't want to access. Them. But it, but. It's you know in a lot of cases it's a it's a capacity issue it's either a capacity issue or it has to do with uh, the background of the individual. Thank you for clarifying. Member Garcia and then Member Glass. 
Yeah, I just want to ask. So, if they were to call two one one, could they get all this information sure. of where things are? Yep. Perfect. So we just have to keep the word out to call two one one. Exactly. Yep. Over the Um. So, do you know what the capacity number is um, between Catholic Charities and Pads on a nightly basis? Uh, the interim housing center has about one hundred and thirty rooms. There's around three hundred individuals there every night. Um, I don't have the exact numbers. It's it's. So last I heard, it was about 95 children. It included about 95 children every night, which is, the, I mean, that's the good news is that these families with children are in a safe location with dignity and privacy and their own bathroom and their own shower, and they're not bouncing from church basement to church basement. Um, the uh, Catholic Charities Hope House is a relatively small. Um, there's 16 beds there with some pro, uh, COVID protocols. I think they're capacity was reduced and they were doing, we were putting some individuals in hotels. Um, I'm not exactly sure what their numbers are <coughs> at this point. Uh, did I answer your question? Was the first one, what was the first one you said? So DuPage Pads um, has what's called the interim housing center. Okay, I didn't know if that was one of the same. So yeah, that's okay. the hotel that the that the um, county assisted them in the purchase. Okay. And I should, I should mention, I don't know if people saw in the paper this morning, April Redzik, the, um, President of Penn, President and CEO of PADS is um, Congressman Kasten's um, guest at the State of the Union tonight. Great. And I'm sure Mary, that, if yeah. I could really quickly, because I have to leave. Greg, I just sent you a really good article on the national count that was in the New York Times on February 3rd, if you wanted to share that with the rest of the, anybody who's oh, interested yeah. in reading yeah. that. Yeah. I'll, I'll share it via email. And just a quick question. Um, are we seeing the numbers go up given the games that are being played by other governors and other states taking their migrants and freeing them to different states. I, any of that. I don't know that those individuals are showing up in the in the um, in the DuPage system. Um, there was a very brief period of time where some of the asylees were housed in DuPage, but that was a very short period of time. They were then moved to Cook County. I would have to, I'd have to um, ask the, the individual service providers. I don't know the answer to that question. I don't think so. And if if it is, it's not a significant number. Okay. Member you. Thank you. Sorry to continue the questioning, but I'm really interested to know. Um, so during your count, is there like a report about demographics yes. and age and if their families and individuals? Absolutely. If they're chronically homeless. Yep. If they're just recently. All of that. Homeless. Yes. Yeah, Where and it, it's yeah, um, well, it, they are they are compiling all that information. Um, we should have it, I think, within a couple of weeks. Um, it's obviously dependent on the amount of information the individual chooses to share. So sometimes it's just there was a person in a car. That's all we that's all we know. Other times we're actually able to engage and have a conversation and, and learn more. But it's completely dependent on the, the and the volunteers are are you know encouraged to just. You know, if someone wants to be left alone, clearly leave them alone. Don't if someone's not willing to engage, don't push it. So, okay. sorry, one more question. Um, is there at um, these services? Do they also inform the residents about you know like work net to page Absolutely. and like just to try to mm -hmm. resolve the situation more on a more permanent basis? Absolutely, and, and tell them like educate them on what the services are to help. They Support absolutely do. Right? Yeah. So, so um, DuPage Pads being the largest provider of um, interim housing, they have case managers on site um, at at the facility, and that's exactly what they do. They work with the they work with the clients to figure out how to resolve their their um, housing instability. So, in some cases, it's reuniting them with family. In some cases, it's getting them access to um, uh, to health health services or mental health services. Mm -hmm. In some cases, it's getting them access to employment services. Um, Do you so, have any statistics on the success rate of, you know, getting the interim residents into a permanent housing situation? Yeah, I'm sure. I'm services? sure we do. Um, I think it would probably make sense uh, within the next couple of meetings to have a, actually a full presentation on this. Yeah, but. Yeah. Um, Yes, and I, what Pats will tell you is that the, the biggest challenge is finding affordable housing for individuals. So um, individuals are experiencing homelessness because they can't afford where they're living or they can't afford a new place um, and they can't find one um, that they can afford with the wages that they're earning. Any other questions? Affordable housing and childcare. Too many. 
Oh, right. Yes. So the homeless continuum of care has um, a website and it has a dashboard on it that has many of the uh, much of the information that, that you're all asking for. And um, remember you not only do will we have the demographics on the point in time, we do have the demographics on anyone who's entering the, the sort of the homeless provider system. So in terms of breakouts of how many are families, how many are chronically homeless, how many are, you know, parenting youth, which is someone between the ages of 18 and 24 with a child. Um, how many children, how many, you know, how many families have children, what their race and ethnicity are. Um, so I think most of that should be on the dashboard, which is on dupagehomeless.org. And then finally, Mary, um, how many volunteers participate in that? Uh... I don't know. I will, I will tell you that um, the Milton Township CERT team, which is Citizen Emergency Response Team, I think it's called, is that right? Right. Um, they're an enormous uh, help because they, a um, couple of years ago, I don't know, six or seven years ago now, they stepped up and said they wanted to participate. They cover all the forest preserves, the, you know, the um, prairie path, all of those. That they, they use the point in time as kind of a, a practice for them for, you know, locating lost person, search and rescue, that kind of thing. So um, they've been a tremendous help. But the total number of volunteers, I don't know. I'm going to guess it's somewhere around 30-ish, 40. I don't, honestly. I don't Is there a way to pass on this board's thank you to Yeah, them? actually, in terms of the cert, I'd like to do a, a proclamation for all of the volunteers, but specifically recognize the Milton Township cert team because they've been a huge help over Let's the years. Yes. Anything else? No. Thank you very much. Okay. I appreciate it. Uh, do we have any old business? And then we have any new business? I need a motion and a second to adjourn. So moved. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Thank you. Everybody.